Hey YouTube, what's up? It's Should I Get It Here for Ads Productions for another weekly news segment. So today I have nine great stories for you guys, so you might want to stick around. But I did want to let you guys know that I picked up my own copy of iLife 11 for my iMac behind me. So if you guys want to see some videos on that, make sure you check out my channel. Click on the annotation right there, or wait till the end of the video and click on the link in the doobly-doo. The first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is that Apple is no longer shipping any of their Macs with Adobe Flash Player built in. So before what Apple used to do is have Flash Player built in like most Windows manufacturers do in the operating system and they also had it in their recovery disks. But now starting with Mac OS X line and the new MacBook Airs and up, they will no longer be shipping with Adobe Flash Player built right in. And Apple representatives say that this is because if users do want Flash, which is almost anybody, unless you watch everything in HTML5, then they can download it from Adobe's website and Apple is still supporting them. But they think that users should have the most up-to-date and secure version of Flash. That's why they should download it right from Adobe. Alright guys, so my next story is the Samsung Galaxy Player 50. This is an MP3 player from Samsung in their Galaxy lineup. So you guys probably know about the Galaxy S smartphones and the Galaxy Tab from Samsung. But now they are releasing the Samsung Galaxy Player 50. And this is the first ever Android based MP3 player that actually has support for Google applications. That includes Google Maps, YouTube, Gmail and all of the apps made by Google including Google Goggles. Arcos has been making Android based layers for a few years now but they have not had Google application support. But speaking about droids and tablets and touchscreen thingamajiggers, the HP Slate was announced this week. It's going to come in with a price tag of $799. So when you think about this, for a tablet it is pretty pricey. You can get a netbook with about the same specs, maybe even better, for a bit lower than $799. So it does seem a bit pricey. The specs are very good though, especially compared to the iPad. It's a legitimate Windows 7 machine though. It has USB ports, has two cameras built in, has all that good stuff. If you want more on it, there is a link to a story about the HP Slate. But what do you guys think? Do you think that a Windows 7 tablet with a 1.86 GHz processor and USB ports and two cameras built in is worth $799? And if so, do you think HP is doing the right thing by basically only marketing this at their business users? Speaking of Microsoft and Windows, Microsoft is launching games for Windows Marketplace. This is going to be an online game store which is right in the browser. You need no applications for it, no Steam, no OnLive, none of that stuff. It's all in the browser. And on November 15th, games will be launched by Microsoft into the Windows Marketplace. There you can download digital copies of games using either Microsoft points or credit cards. Now moving on from Microsoft and tablets and all that good stuff. Now Netflix for the Wii and the PlayStation 3 no longer need any type of DVD or CD inside. Basically Microsoft and Netflix had an exclusive contract that wasn't very public that said that if Netflix wanted to have streaming services on any other consoles they had to do it through a disc so the Xbox would be more convenient quote unquote and so now that partnership has ended and now you can download the Netflix application in the PlayStation Store or in the Wii Marketplace channel. I have a quick question for you. Do you FaceTime? Well now FaceTime is available for the Mac desktop and laptops and this was launched on October 20th. The beta was launched, it's on Apple's website, link to that also in the doobly-doo. So now you can FaceTime with an iPhone 4 or an iPod Touch 4th generation straight from your Mac. You can also FaceTime from Mac to Mac. If you guys want to see a demo of that, there is a link to my video of FaceTime from the Mac on my channel, youtube.com slash should I get it. In other Apple news, Apple has previewed Mac OS X line and one of the things that they previewed with that is the Mac App Store. So basically you guys probably know how there's an app store for iPad, there's an app store for the iPod Touch, and there's an iTunes store for music and videos. But now they will have a Mac app store on the Mac OS X line, but the nice part is that they are going to be launching this within the next 90 days, so anybody with Snow Leopard will be able to get the Mac app store for free, in which you can click to download full applications including Keynote, Pages, and other apps like that. They are also getting APIs so that developers can make their own beautiful Mac applications. My last story for today is the BoxyBox. If you guys don't know what that is, BoxyBox is a streaming box. It's kind of like the Apple TV or the Google TV or the Roku, and it's going to be selling for $199 in the US. 
And the nice thing is, Amazon will be shipping it on November 10th. Most places will be shipping on November 17th, but if you want to, you can pre-order now to get yours on the 10th of November. But guys, that was this week's episode of Weekly Tech News. Hope you guys enjoyed the new setup, and please comment below with any thoughts or feedback you have on the show, and tell us which format of the show you like the most, and we'll continue to do that to provide the best high-definition content that we can for you. Thank you guys again. Please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe to Ads Productions up top, and help me out by subscribing to YouTube.com slash Should I Get It. All the links are below, annotation to the side. Peace.